Listening to a special episode of Neo Cash Radio with JJ. Getting right into it, we are talking with David Werba, co founder and chief marketing officer for Music Economy. David, welcome to the show. JJ, I got to tell you right off the bat, man, uh, it's been a lifelong dream to be Excellent. featured on Neo Cash Radio. I did it. You did I'm it. Here. You're here. And uh, so, Dave, tell us a little bit about yourself uh, to start out with. Ah, I guess pretty diverse background. I mean, I, I, I've been in music since I was, I started playing piano when I was, I was like five years old. Uh, so moved to guitar and trumpet and just kind of be, became a multi-instrumentalist over throughout my career and also a composer, songwriter and producer. Um, but I started touring with my band in college. I went to University of Illinois and after graduation, moved to Chicago and just continued to play and tour uh, for the next, for about 10 years. It was about a 10 year span. Um, and then retired from live performance. I was about 29 and uh, I was about 2001, 2002. And that's when I got right into web development. Okay. And yeah, so 15 years later, here I am. I mean, there's, <laughs> I don't want to give too long of a description of all the projects I work on, sure. but, um, but basically you have a, a music background as a performer and, and obviously touring, uh, musician. So you, that's sort of the, your foundation. And then you got into web development and more than that, uh, it's your, your bio, uh, mentions, uh, TV as well. Yeah. I, Music Forte is, I guess, a good thing to mention because that was uh, the longest run with a dev project that I founded. I co-founded that, and that was a that was a social network for independent musicians worldwide. Like just before MySpace, you know, pre Facebook and everything. So there was a lot of features of that uh, that Facebook even adopted. I, I don't know if it was consciously or not, but that but I ended up seeing them later, and we. Had, we grew that to about a little over 110,000 artists actually set up a storefront um, on that website. So that was a pretty big project and pretty good experience just getting my finger on the pulse of like, you know, global indie musicians sure. and what they need, what they're looking for, how to help them build their career. And we also had a forum with over 60,000 members in there. So <laughs> I'm like... Uh, I guess barkled for the turbulence of all the slack trolls that come in and uh, mess around with us. So at what point did you find out about uh, blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies and the like? Man, you know what? I'm like, of our team, I'm probably the least versed on blockchain technology and okay. crypto. So you're not going to hear much from me on hard forks and hash rates today. Okay, but fine. I'm probably the most versed on uh, just global music industry landscape along with brian byrne who's also has a pretty impressive run uh as a musician because he was a multi-platinum selling uh canadian rock band i mother earth and uh so we have a pretty good pretty good blend of skills on our team you know yeah, pretty so. impressive a lot of intelligence uh, behind the project so let's let's talk about music economy and and just sort of give give me like the the boilerplate. How do you describe this to someone? What is this? Hmm, it's a good question. And I, like I was thinking about this, I, I kind of want to avoid like a esoteric definition sure. of this, just so most people will understand. Um, so I'm going to go with. Just think about a blend between Spotify and SoundCloud on the blockchain, but that's just the beginning because it's also factors in uh, ASCAP, BMI, and Ticketmaster. Wow. Minus all the BS. Right. And minus all the intermediaries and all the giant fees and all the tiny cuts for artists. Um, 100% goes to the artists. You know, we, we're not taking like a piece of the transactions but uh that in a nutshell that's kind of what we're building so you're thinking that it's blockchain, it's a, of course 
a platform for buying and selling not only tickets but music um and then it, it, more than that just the entire artist sort of uh life cycle and and money yeah, the entire economy it's the new music economy and that that's kind of obviously what the name's about um but yeah, it's it's a streaming platform, but it's like music economy, the the token, and we'll get into the crowd sale a little later. But that's what it's going to unlock is is just the the full music industry atmosphere, like okay. all the all the features of it, not just streaming. So now, uh, can you tell us about what uh, blockchain this is on or a part of? Sure, it's actually being built. On the Music Coin blockchain, which is was built on the Ethereum blockchain. Yep. And it's so it's I could probably like a yeah, I can give you a quick history about Music Coin because that's kind of you know the background of this project. That's where we came from. Yeah. That's where our team came from. So, uh, Music Coin is a currency that's it's traded on Bitrex and Cryptopia, and there's like a Change.org petition to be added to Poloniex. Um, but that's where uh, that's where we all met, and like Music Coin, the platform. It's also it's also the streaming platform that exists right now that you can join and kind of see some of the features. And so the web application was built by Dan Pfeiffer, who's a co-founder, also with contribution from all the team members. And Brian Byrne was also a co-founder of uh, Music Coin. And Isaac Ma as well. Um, so I was on the core team, the core dev team there with uh, a few other people. And I guess I'll just answer your question that you sent me about why we're doing the token, because it's kind of a seamless blend sure. into it, is we, uh, we wanted to show proof of concept first. Okay. Um, wanted to have a functional platform. So we were in beta for a while, and then we came out of that. But we still kind of consider like music one like a beta platform. But everything works. Artists can upload their music. Um, they get plays and get tips, and they build their balance. They earn in music coin, and they can withdraw that coin from their wallet, and they can send it directly to Bitrex, and then cash out. There's a few steps there. We want to clean that part up, but. The point is it works. Right. And before we went uh, into like a, a crowd sale, a token crowd sale, anything like that, we wanted to have that because how often does that really happen? You know, not, not we've been kind of, yeah. Most, most of Go the ahead. white paper and that's about it. Yeah. I mean, we're after seeing so many projects, they're just like raising millions of dollars based on like a two page white paper or maybe a five page business plan with no proof of concept. No operational platform, you know, just a, a hope that people will dig what they're talking about. So we kind of took a different approach. And before we got into crowd sale discussion, we actually had like a donation uh, buttons up there and they're still up there. But we just wanted to kind of gauge um, how much of that would be happening and see if that's something that could sustain us. Sure. And as much as we appreciate what was coming through, it was like, <laughs> I mean, it just it was not even close like to what we need. With the scope of this project, it, it was just, you know, not even close. And uh, so we started entertaining, you know, just some private venture capital options and even like institutional funding. And uh, but that turned out to not really be what we wanted because uh Right at that time, we submitted to co-found it, which is a, a big piece of this as well. And they actually they accepted us. They and co-found it is a it's a distributed venture capitalist, you know, fundraising ecosystem, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fundraising platform that's you know obviously built on the blockchain as well. And so what they do is they facilitate crowd sales and they've they've been a huge help uh partnering with us in terms of setting us up with uh legal just like business structure and marketing and just organization of everything but the first step with co-found it was they actually did their own crowd sale to start their project and that was like a month ago and they raised 15 million in two days yeah and so 
podcast. Yeah, you want me to keep going here? Yeah, I, I know you, you know, got a bunch. That's of fine. That's that's fine. I, I didn't know exactly where you're gonna end up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so basically, what you're, you're to, to boil it down in a nutshell, you you had before you had this idea and you made the platform. You made it so that things work and that uh, people can use it functionally, proof of concept. But you, it wasn't the, the money wasn't coming in to sustain the further development, and you're saying that the the token sale. Um, can can allow you to then capitalize on that fundraising and uh, develop it to what you see as its its potential. Oh, absolutely, and the, and that was the timing of this. The stars kind of aligned for us with, with all of this because we we're in this period. It's like you know what what's the next step? It's like we the plan was always you know to reach out for funding in some manner, but uh, that was right when we met the guys that co-founded it and. We also just getting the feedback from them. They got, I think they got close to about a hundred proposals at this point of uh, crowd sale projects that want to work with them. And we were one of the first couple they chose. They just, they just chose a couple of them, two or three. And uh, so their feedback to us is just like, it was almost kind of of a no brainer. I mean, they did their due diligence on us and everything, but just again, to repeat that fact is that, having an operational platform to show proof of concept. It's like, whoa, yeah. I mean, no, like, it, like you, you guys, your guys are going to sell out the crowd sale before it's public. And it's like, yeah. So we're like, let's go. It, it, and it was, it was a full consensus. So we're like, we have to do this. Um, All right. So let's, and, let's, yeah. let's talk more about that token sale then. Uh, do you have uh, dates in mind and, and things like that uh, exchange? Yeah. So public is, end of July, I believe, right, right around the 24th. So it, yeah, it'd be cool if actually I, maybe I, uh, if you wanted to invite me back, like right when that's happening, because there's a few parts of our business plan I can't release today, sure. but I, I can in like a week or so. Um, but you know, what's interesting is I, I listened to that, the 10 X episode sure. and, uh, and it's a great show, by the way. I love your show. Thank Jada. you. Thank you so much. And it's it's very entertaining and informative. It's glorious. Well, we talk about the future oh. of money today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but the 10x episode. So I'm listening to um, how he was explaining like pre-registration and a way to kind of secure tokens uh, before the crowd sale just to get. He's like, yeah, he's like people. The only way is just send me an email and I'm getting 400 emails a day and it's it's kind of hard to deal with. And like that right there, I, that's why I want to explain this thing with, with co-found it is because they have this thing called priority pass. So they like handle the whole pre-registration process that allows people to um, secure tokens before the public crowd sale. And there is limits uh, cause it's kind of like an early bird list, but it's all organized uh, just with their whole, the way the software program is like built and everything. So it's not just kind of unorganized. Like it sounded like he was explaining. I, I think that's, I think that's going to be a pretty important step in the future yeah. for, uh, other crowd sales because it's like right around the time when the thing goes live, it's just total insanity oh, yeah. because so much. We just experienced that yet. Yeah. Two days ago with the status ICO and then prior to that, the bank or ICO, both of them caused massive yep. network uh, outages. Basically, people couldn't do anything for a while. Um, so, yeah, I, I think th yeah, having a more intelligent way of processing it and processing it ahead of time, you know, it sort of comes down to like producing a piece of music or art. It's, it's the pre-production that goes into it drastically affects the final product. And if you just do it live, you know, you're going to end up with some wild things. Well, and that exactly. And that it's also an opportunity that that's what's exciting about this whole space is as you know, everybody's watching everyone's crowd sale and they see the struggles they have. They see maybe some mistakes, something they could have done better. And then new companies come along and fix it. And that, that's what I feel like co-founded did in many ways. Um, not just with the priority pass, but just the facilitation of the whole setup for it, where we're not just left on our own to, you know, get all our ducks in a row, especially with like legal and everything. Cause that, that stuff's important. And, uh, I think it's, uh, 
I don't want to say most, but I think it's obvious that a lot of people just don't even th think about it. They just like breeze past it and they just go live and they may, maybe they raise a few hundred thousand, even seven figures. And then they disappear or the thing doesn't work and people wonder why. Sure. Like this is the stuff. This is why is because they, it wasn't set up properly. Right. So yeah, we're being very careful about it. And uh, is there so, is there so, a yeah. location at there? Is, is there a company or something like that? Something incorporated? Or is there some location you're based out of? Uh yeah, I, I ran that by the guys today. Uh, that question was like uh, <laughs> consensus was the answer is the blockchain. I mean, we're all sure. we're all based in different cities: Hong Kong, Toronto, Arizona, Colorado, Michigan. Um, but we will have a physical address uh, in registering like the entity uh for this project sure. but that's just another thing that'll be complete in about seven eight yeah. days because a big thing that we're seeing is a lot of these projects are based out of non-us locations so they're they're based out of shanghai for example or uh mm -hmm. switzerland you know obviously has a bunch of different projects going on there uh it, it, so that sort of thing and that's kind of what i was inquiring about but uh I'd be happy to come back and explain that part, but it, but absolutely, it's like yeah, even like Hong Kong, you know, being an autonomous state, you know, fits with the with the DAO type structure. Um, but yeah, and just to answer that question, is like, is this a DAO? It's like it's the DAO type project. Yeah, I, I wouldn't just say it's like an autonomous organization that that's not exactly. Right. Um, well, I, it's hard for things but. to start out as a an autonomous organization. You know, they, it's sort of like a a ball doesn't have momentum; it doesn't have any direction or velocity, and so you, you kind of need that initial push, you know. And right, and and, right. and to that point, someone else can then add their influence to it and whatnot. But so you have plans to like the the token will have more to do. It's like can people do more than just buy things with the token? Is basically my question. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's going to unlock a suite of features, which will enable actually like it's going to enable fans to earn coin, like being part of this project so that they don't have to just sit on their hands and watch the artists have all the sure. fun. And uh, <laughs> but, because that's a, that's something we witness. It's like the kind of the first stage of building the music coin web app database was, it was all about outreach to artists. And, um, once we were doing that, we saw people using it, but, and we were giving them free plays just to get them going. But once those ran out, then the listeners were in this place. It's like, wait, so I gotta, I just gotta go buy a ton of coin. And, and there was just kind of little confusion on that part. And we wanted to address that where it's not just like, yeah, come join come listen and just start a new subscription or something like you do on Spotify. We actually want them to uh, be part of like the earning opportunity, not just of the platform, but f with individual artists and that whole suite of features that are going to be unlocked. That's something I can't say right. today. Okay. Like, I'll explain that. Yeah, we'll explain that very, very So you, soon. you brought up Spotify a couple of times and Spotify recently acquired media chain uh, we did, <laughs> and, and then there's yeah. Ujo Music, who's part of Consensus. Uh, yeah. So you you've got a couple of competitors in this space, so to speak. And then again, I don't know exactly what each of these are going to offer versus what you're offering. So I don't know where the overlap lies. But what sort of, I mean, what would you say to to a listener that sort of defines your your you know music economy versus these other products I mentioned? Well, there's there's some piece, yeah. The and first, like the Spotify buying media chain. Um, before, I, I'm curious. What what do you think about that? What does that mean I, to I, you, man? Do you think they're actually gonna like, like Spotify is gonna become like a blockchain? Business? I I could see that. It, it really depends on. Honestly, it depends on their, their legal tendrils, right? It depends on. If they're U.S. based and if they can, uh, like if they're based out of Nevada, for example, then I think they're going to have a better chance than if they're based out of New York because the New York bit license is very difficult to deal with. And in Nevada, they just protect the blockchain where you can't even tax it. So I think it really depends on that. But I, th it really, I, I think Spotify might be one of the first to start making that switch over to uh, blockchain, but it's it's got a ways to go. 
I mean, it, you know, I, I, I. Well, that's the thing. the The ways to go is is the part. Like I, I saw a lot of feedback from people on that bit of news. It didn't really mean much to me because the media chain again was not an operational platform. They didn't buy like a working technology. Sure. It was something that they were just in the process of uh, building. How that translates to like the change in Spotify's model and business plan, I have no idea. But I don't. My, my opinion is that I don't feel we're anyone's even going to see the realization of it. No, for years. I think what's going to happen yeah. first is yeah. if they do anything blockchain, it'll be one small piece of the Spotify platform that you can go and experience. But it'll be like a test run, a beta phase, and then it'll it'll still be. A couple years before any big major changes are, are throughout the entire platform um and, and ujo okay yeah let me, let me say yeah. on this jj is this is something i say often to people when i'm explaining just the whole ecosystem of the industry so you look at spotify and, um like artists they've been conditioned to fight to get listed on platforms that are built strictly for the major label top 1%. Okay. So the only people of the independent 99% that end up making money in the process are the middlemen. Okay. You know, and that, I don't think that really registers with most people because they just look at, Oh, Spotify. Hey, Spotify. Yay. I'm on Spotify. And then you say, how much money did you make this year? Oh, $3. Yeah. It's like, Oh, and then, <laughs> Spotify is like, I mean, streaming giant, but they continue to build just huge debt. Like, I don't think this is public information, too. They have yet to finish a single year in profit since inception. Wow. A single year. And like their business models and average salaries, like 170,000. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the same old corporate BS. And it's uh, same with SoundCloud. Uh, kind of dominates like the embedded player space um floundering they're reported to be seeking a buyer for like 250 million when they got an offer for a billion a wow. year and a half ago and yet like artists they still join and promote their profiles there and they're excited about it and it's just it's just another example of a broken industry and in the old paradigm that has been around for 30 plus years where like you look at why is Spotify in debt? Who are they fighting with? They're fighting with the major labels who are representing that 1%. Okay. Yeah. Like that, that's the fight. That's why the, all the 99% of artists are not making any money. It's because the fight well, is in on that yeah, top barrier level. entry. You, you have to basically, it's like if you don't come equipped with a lot of resources, you just can't compete in, in, the standard legacy markets as far as music is concerned. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you look at ASCAP and BMI and others that they've created a model that forces artists to wait, you know, six to nine months for royalty payments from the, like this convoluted licensing system. And so again, these brands and same with Ticketmaster in no way are they built to champion the independent artists. So when you look at music economy, it's like, okay, building on the blockchain, solving all these problems. We're an internal licensing system, by the way. Okay. I didn't mention that. So, yeah, that's that's another big part of this. So it's like you look at Spotify, SoundCloud, ASCAP, BMI, Ticketmaster. Like, I, I think those brands, unless they make a major change fast, are, I don't think it's going to be a good right. future for them. Um as the blockchain continues to grow in popularity in cryptocurrency. So that's what's exciting about all this. And people know it. Once this clicks for people, they are – I. it's just blowing my mind how many people are coming forward to us just wanting – this is before co-founded. You know, we partner with them just saying, can I get a piece of this project? This is the future. And then the next day, a few more. It's like, can I give you like five grand for a piece of the project? We're like <laughs> – we're like, wow, man, this it's it's just endless. People just they want to be a part of this thing and they see the future once they look at all the information here and put the pieces together. So uh, can you um, give us an idea of how you're raising some money? You don't uh, we don't yet know what the goal is. And I think that might come out with the later information and whatnot. But you can give me a general idea of yep. how you're going to allocate this and, and what you know, how this is going to power forward 
to your the vision that that you see for this platform allocation is not going to be anything like outside the norm with the crowd sales in terms of like you know percentage for development and everything but i, I can't give those okay. numbers today um but what was the second just sort of, of like question? uh basically you're 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 fundraising because you want a complete development on this 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 new platform music economy and you want uh so so basically you are raising money to finish that um do you have any sort of like is there 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 goal points or something like that is there sort of like we want to have this functionality by first quarter next year or this that sort of thing oh yeah oh yeah like full roadmap full biz plan and i think you said you're uh, uploading this tomorrow. I will hit you up next week, and maybe you can like update the uh, the notes or the blog post about it with the answer to that question. I'll have that information Excellent. for you. Yes. So, uh, and then tell uh, tell our listeners where, where they can find out more information about this. Yeah. So, musiconomy dot com, and it, there's it's m u s i c o n o m i dot com. That's where you can. Uh, register for the mailing list right now you can see a little background on the team um and we have some pretty well-known advisors coming in that we'll be adding in a few days that i'm sure you've heard of nice. um and yeah and then obviously we have a slack channel that we're just kind of starting to explain things to people there and that link is on the dot com i just said and then we have social media, Facebook, Twitter, everything. And you're, you're saying that uh, in about eight, eight, seven or eight days, you're going to have a, a big public announcement? Yeah, like release of uh, okay. the business plan. Um, yeah, just a lot more information about leading up to uh, the crowd Excellent. sale. Well, I, I will definitely try to reach out to you again and maybe have you on for a short update. But thank you so much for joining me here on New Cash Radio. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or a, a, a pitch for the, uh, the the listeners? <laughs> well, it was a pleasure being here, man. I, I really appreciate appreciate reaching. It was actually our Australian Dan kind of uh, yeah. connected us here. So thanks to Dan for uh, hooking us up. Pitch. But yeah, man, I think we've I think we've covered a lot today. I would just I would I would uh, I'd ask people to just. Uh, go register for the mailing list just so they can get all the information as it comes in real time. Feel free to come to Slack. You know, we'd ask any questions. Uh, and yeah, keep an eye on it. it. It's an exciting project and it's, we, our whole team has spent a lot of time and our own money because we believe in that this is the future and it's kind of a growing sentiment that we found. So excellent. We're excited excellent. About Thank it. you, David. Yeah, thanks, JJ. Thank you for listening to Neo Cash Radio. Just a reminder, you can tune into our content at neocashradio.com. You can subscribe on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today.